reminder to motorists to be careful on the roads. This crash happened just after 1 o'clock this afternoon at the intersection of 12th Street and Clarence Avenue. A police cruiser and a car collided. Police say the patrol car had its emergency lights flashing. It proceeded through the intersection against a red light when it was T-boned by the car. The officer sustained minor injuries. The driver of the other vehicle was not hurt. There's no word on whether charges will be laid. And while motorists are urged to use extreme caution in this bitterly cold weather, the mayor claims he was misquoted last week after a vehicle went over the guardrail on Circle Drive North. Investigators say speed and alcohol were not factors. Media reports said the mayor then called for lower speed limits on bridges to help prevent similar incidents. Unfortunately, it was reported in inaccurately once again. But, uh, uh, you know, that's something that could be looked at. Uh, but again, people will travel at the speed that they believe is safe. Uh, I, I'm wondering too aloud that whether or not uh, we should have signs that tell people how fast they're going. Uh, but again, uh, we have bridges that were built in areas that were never planned for bridges. You look at the new Circle Drive South Bridge, it has this long thoroughfare until you get to the bridge that straight takes you straight across on both the east and west sides of the banks. Uh, so consequently, there's lots of things that are there. But the most important part is we just want people to stay safe. We want to hear from you on this issue. Our web poll tonight is, should the speed limit be lowered on city bridges during the winter? To vote, log on to our website, saskatoon.ctvnews.ca. City crews are dealing with a major water main break tonight. It happened at Faithful Avenue between 51st and 52nd Streets. The city describes it as an emergency water main repair. As a result, traffic is restricted to one lane on Faithful. Crews hope to have the road restrictions lifted by the end of tomorrow. The city of Saskatoon is in damage control following a major power outage. Thousands of people were in the cold and dark yesterday for several hours. But the problem wasn't just the outage. For many, it was the lack of information they received. Jamie Fisher explains. Thousands of people in east side neighborhoods were in the dark Sunday night. Lack of power and a lack of information from the city for over two hours as temperatures hovered in the minus 30s. When I went on the Saskatoon Light and Power website at, uh, I think they posted at 6.38 that there was a power outage. Well, we'd been without power for an hour or maybe a little more by then. And so they were confirming what we already knew. What was sad was that they didn't have more there at that point than that. After realizing the power wasn't coming back right away, Davy's wife and stepson went to stay with family while he waited for the lights to come back on. Eventually, he turned to Twitter for information. All he could find came from Councillor Charlie Clark's Twitter feed. Probably it started because people started contacting me for information, and I, then I, as I was looking for information, I realized, yeah, if I'm not getting it, most other people aren't. Clark contacted city managers and tweeted what he could. Still, people were upset the city itself provided little information. The city said part of the problem was a human error that prevented their automatic tweets from sending out updates. Saskatoon Light and Power said their information line can take up to 200 calls at a time. However, Sunday's power outage affected 4,000 customers. I think communication is something we can always do better. Mm -hmm. um, and so over the last uh, year or two, we've, we've, we've made improvements and clearly we still need to make further improvements. So, mm -hmm. um, and we'll be using this event as a, as a learning uh, step for us. The city has a new alert program in the works while they'll send information directly to citizens. The contract for the project has been granted, but there isn't a timeline for its launch. Jamie Fisher, CTV News, Saskatoon.